so this is uh, workshop Wednesday I might be filming it on a Tuesday but it will be broadcast tomorrow Wednesday um, I asked Graham Austin from Garden Railways Limited to make me a water top-up measurement system for my Mamod Quarry Loco. I sent him some bits, some vague measurements. And when I say vague, I do mean vague. Uh, I'd made up a mock-up of what I thought I needed from a bit of copper pipe and this is what Graham has come up with which to me is absolutely superb it's got a globe valve which I found and sent we have a banjo with a union to go into what was the water top-up system of the sorry the, let's go back to the start the Mamad quarry as I'll show you in a minute has a boiler level um, indicator which is basically just a plug that you undo and I wanted something like the Acucraft Caradoc where I could in inject water during a run through the water top-up valve that it comes with and find out whether or not the boiler was full to the top because the gas lasts longer than the water one thing is f absolutely certain it doesn't matter if the fire goes out before the boiler is empty but it does matter enormously if the opposite happens the boiler empties and then the fire goes out so i've been topping up the quarry loco during runs and hoping that I've got the water levels right. The other thing about the quarry that makes it a bit of a troublesome engine to keep the water topped up is that it primes. So the, the, the I don't know what am I trying to say here. The tolerance between the water being in the right level of the boiler, the water being in the boiler at the right level and it being too much and water carrying over into the cylinders and then straight up in the air through the chimney it's very small probably 10 mil or less that's milliliters so i've i want to be able to know how much water i've put in the boiler before i top it up i know i don't need this bit here or at least i don't think i will so the first thing i'm going to do is just loosen that off and see how we get on. So I'm taking off the bottom union here. So there we are. What is that? That's a 10. So to the loco, as they say, in all the best publications including the one I help to uh, proofread I don't always do a desperately good job of that it has to be said but there's some spectacular wrongnesses in last month that were totally down to me so here we are the quarry loco itself and just give Fred a bit of a break. Now, now we're going to use something nice and white because uh, it will show up well. Yeah, that will do. What we have here, if you look into the cab from above, there's the displacement lubricator, there's the water top up valve there, and here is the boiler level plug you see that there and as you can see from me having to twiddle it around to get the camera angle right it's pretty difficult to reach it's difficult to reach even with 
with the loco cold. With it hot, it's just no good. Now it has a recessed, can you see that? It's not very clear, I'm afraid. I'll get a torch out, that might make it a bit better. That is the water top up plug ended. Excuse me, there's a phone call just coming in. So, as I was saying before the phone rang, here's the the water drainage hole. And when you fill the boiler up through the, um, take the safety valve out and you fill the boiler through that hole there, wait for it to trickle out there. And then the idea is that you put in the plug that I've taken out. I haven't lost it. Please say I haven't lost it. No, I haven't, there it is. Um, and you put this plug back in that hole, then light the loco. So hopefully now, what I'm gonna be able to do I'll just pop it in without seals for a second. This is just to check the fit. Is that is going to be perfect? Thank you very much, Graham Austin. Put that in there with seals either side and then light. So, next job find some seals. And I don't mean the sort that bark and throw footballs up and down. So in my boiler fittings box I have an enormous selection of seals. What I want to say to the person who invented these boxes is why did you make these things removable? Because they always fall out and then you end up with getting well, as you can see, they get all over the place. The box has turned upside down at some stage, which doesn't help. So first of all, I need a seal for the back of the banjo here. It is just possible that the one off the original plug will fit since they're the same thread. So we'll find that out now, if it'll come off, which it doesn't want to. So we'll go for the same size, that one dropped. Every modeler I've spoken to or have contact with, do anything with, that's too big, potentially too big. I think that's about right. So that will seal the back, put it the right side Nigel. That will go into the assembly there, screw down on top of it. And then we need another one for this end. But I can't hide the entire thread. Don't want to do that. So there we have the two seals on, which will compress neoprene. The, uh, the hole is recessed. So it has to be there. Right, this is where things get just a little bit dodgy because you have to sort of hold things in place with four hands and I've only got two. But once this thread has bitten in there, we will be away. And you can see, I think, how tight it is. In there. So that's now grasped firmly on the on there. This will never need to come off again. So I can tighten it down quite 
even quite a degree of pressure compared to what I might do if it was something that needed to come in and out. And the next thing to do will obviously be a steam test. So that's as tight as I want to go there. It looks sealed. The banjo union's in place. The globe valve is currently pointing straight at the floor of the of the uh, of the foot plate. So I'm going to just very, very gently angle that up so that it's got a bit of space. And that with the 8mm spanner holding the globe valve in place, I'll just tighten this union back to where it was. Bit of play, bit of movement. But that is pretty well perfect and I can get in. Bend it very gently around my finger. So I don't want to put a kink in this pipe. There we are. So the gold the globe valve isn't exactly flat, but what it is doing if there's room underneath it here just angle it slightly Ooh. to uh, allow the steam to come out somewhere I don't know about that it still feels a bit I don't know we'll see if it leaks steam and it's not the end of the world cure it and put it down. So what I'm going to do now is take, open the globe valve fully up. So that now is a fully open and there should be a direct passage between there and the bottom of the foot plate here. So Fred Dibner, you're going to get a foot bath every time you check the water level. End of part one. Now it's a little later in the day and I'll just pop Fred once more on top of his boiler. Another pressure, the safety valve about to lift. There's no steam leaking here. I've put a fibre washer at the back and a smaller neoprene on the front. I'm now going to open the globe valve. And there's some water coming out. So that's working perfectly. Pressure gauge is up to 60 psi. Safety valve is lifting. And let's see how many circuits we can put in this time. I'm go to safety valve just to show you at the bottom here exactly what's happening on here in the globe valve. Okay, so we get it roll and turn the gas down slightly. The helping loco this time, the brakes are fittingly another mammoth, Baskerville, and we're putting the fuel train again. Two tankers filled with water, and we've got full power on here.
so let's see how we go.